Hello everyone, welcome to our advanced simulation methods for the oil and gas industry webinar. Um, the presentation will start shortly. We're going to wait a couple of minutes so people can join us. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Okay, thank you everyone that is uh, joining. We're going to wait for another seconds or so so people can start joining us and then Victor can start his presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for the wait. And I'm going to start with a short presentation of our presenter for today. Um, his name is Pedro Martinez. He's a simulation solutions engineer based in Mexico. He has more than three years of experience as a CAI engineer uh, in the area of finite and analysis. Uh, developing benchmarks, studies, and technical skills. Uh, Victor has built deep knowledge developing structural analysis in Navacus for lead and customers, mainly in the automotive, high tech, and oil and gas industries. And he currently provides technical support for Abacus users at Bias 3D. So I think you're in comments. And Victor, would you like to start the webinar now? Sure thing. Um, thank you very much, Kenya, for the introduction. And thank you all for attending this webinar called Advanced Simulation Methods for the Oil and Gas Industry. So, okay, we'll get started with this one. Uh, but first of all, let me just... Okay, let me just give you a brief uh, introduction of who we are here at Bias 3D. We are a Dassault System Platinum partner for the last four of six years. And we also hold an education, we are also an education partner from Dassault System. Uh, we have certain, we have expertise and experience spanning multiple industries in the US, but also we have branches in Canada, India, and Mexico, and Turkey. Our team has strong academic and theoret theoretical background in various engineering fields such as solid and fluid dynamics and electromagnetics and also in the in the corresponding computational analysis such as FEA and CFD besides that in other numerical analysis such as optimization reliability data analytics and more and we our primary activities include engineering consult consultancy training automation and customization okay so now uh that's all system uh that's all system it's a world leading developer of uh, cad cam and ca software uh, offering a family of more of 120 interrelated software products serving in many industries spanning from transport aerospace, uh, energy, materials, constructions, and territories. Uh, it's a very wide ecosystem of people. Um, it has more than 20,000 people around the world, serving with uh, 12,600 worldwide partners and more than uh, 290,000 enterprise customers. Um, here at uh, Bias 3D, uh, we value 
to provide the application of digital technology, enabling manufacturing and engineering organizations to become better through connected collaboration, process disciplines, and digital product experience to simulate performance and insurance quality. And we provide the digital transformation using the 3D experience technology platform. Okay, so without further ado, we'll get started with this webinar. Uh, this is the scope of the webinar. And as you can see, we'll dive directly into the common scenarios that often have a certain level of complexity. And I'll be presenting to you how, how they can be solved using different simulation and calculation tools. So, okay, let's start with the first one. It's the battle driving analysis. Uh, this is a scenario where the pile is drilled or driven into the ground, and this is done mainly to transfer the loads of big structures into the soil. And these big structures could be bridges, buildings, and even oil, oil and gas production platforms. And in here we can study different cases. Uh, the most common one is the resistance of the soil against the pile. And this is studied because there is a distribution of the pore pressure over time around the pile. And this translates into an, an increase in pull-up resistance. So the, this, um, by studying this increase in pile resistance, uh, one can uh, decide to perform certain changes, such as, for example, geometry changes, such as the pile length or pile, pile sections. And also we can um, decide to make any, changes of other features, such as the size of the driving equipment or different driving settings. And we can do that inside Abacus, the DASO system FEA tool, uh, because it, it provides pore pressure distribution capabilities, but also stress the, the common stress analysis capabilities. And we can also make use of the variety of constitutive models uh, that are supported for soils, uh, which are the more column, the Drucker Pagger, Camplay, and the CAP plasticity model. Okay, so <clears throat> let's uh, continue with the cold tubing. So, this is a component that, well, it's a continuous length of, of steel or composite tubing that is flexible enough to be wound on a large reel for transportation. And it is used mainly for well interventions, such as uh, the liquefaction, which is the process of removing water or condensate from wells. It is also used from, uh, to pump chemicals through the coil. And it can also be used in special applications for drilling. So in this kind of uh, scenarios, we mainly, uh, well, we not only study the straightening of the coil, and the loads associated with this operation. But also we can study the fatigue life of these components and how it, how, how it can be affected. For example, in the past, the coal tubing has been welded together by the process of both welding, but this has been found to be decreasing the fatigue life compared to a spoolable coal tubing connector. And these same components, the coal tubing, uh, may buckle during service. And this can lead to damage of the of the tubing. And just as a quick uh, summary of how this happens is that the actual forces required to displace the tubing within the well exceed a critical level. So it starts to buckle into a sinusoidal shape. Then it is followed by buckling into a helical shape. And also the, there's a uh, frictional drag within the world that is increasing exponentially. So uh, when, when, it, when it overcomes the insertion forces, it locks up, which means it will stop moving despite any additional forces. And there, uh, the, the cold to be made plastically deformed or it may even fail. So we can study this drill pipe uh, behavior in all of these steps, the buckling, the post buckling and the lockup behavior. And we can do that with the plasticity 
by the material plasticity and the piping pipe contact capabilities inside Abacus and also inside the Simulia 3D Experience platform. Okay, now um, we can also study the pipelines and the interaction with the soil. And this is, well, pipelines are, are often buried to provide protection and support. So in this category of studies, you can investigate the effect of ground movement on buried pipelines. And these large ground movements can be caused by different scenarios. For example, it's uh, due to faulting, uh, landslides, slope failures, and seismic activity. And for that, inside Abacus, we can use a special type of elements called pipe soil interaction elements, or PSIs. And these kind of elements are, are advanced since the constitutive model of the soil can be, be defined in, in, in there but it can be also defined as an isotropic. So the behavior along each direction of the soil can be defined. Okay, the umbilicals. Um, these components are essential components for different offshore operations. Uh, and they are essential mainly because they provide systems such as power, control, and fluid injection to the deep water wells. And they contain a complex structure because they have an inner helical arrangement of tubes, uh, the ones that we on the exterior of the um, umbilical. And they are, they are often studied resting on the seabed, but also they are studied hanging as a water column where they are subjected to different aggressive loading scenarios. For example, uh, underwater pressure, web movements, or solar fluids. And all those loads affect the durability of this structure. So, and not only that, we are talking about, not, not only is this a complex structure, but it also has, has different materials. For example, it, it can, the, some polymers can be used for the feeders and the coatings. Stainless steel can be used for the hydraulic lines. Uh, fiber reinforced polymer for the binding tapes. So we, are, we can see different kinds of materials acting in the same structure at the same time. But we can um, still analyze these kind of complex structures inside uh, our FEA tools. And as I was telling you, there, there are different scenarios and mainly the, the, the main loads that are acting on the umbilical are tension, bending and crushing. And for crushing, it is recommended to have a very low ovality when the when the umbilical is being uh, crushed. Uh, less than three percent is the recommendation, and uh, this tolerance is um, set in order to avoid deforming the the umbilical tubes because they, this could lead to a lower fatigue left. So uh, we definitely don't want that in that in these kind of uh, components. And with, that, with the performing by performing a cross study, we can obtain how much ovality we are obtaining of this uh, cross section. And also, with as with a lot of scenarios, we can validate the results against this data from uh, experiments. Okay, now um, let's move on to the solid expandable tubulars or SEPs. Um, they consist mainly simply of moving a metal pipe, um, sorry, a, a fixed metal pipe, and it is expanding by forcing a die or cone to pass through it. And these kind of components are mainly used in the petroleum exploration and drilling. And they have been used in the past for, many, for different problems, such as increasing the production rates by by, um, by increasing the cross section, by also repairing worn casings and also isolating sections of the well to improve water control and also sand control. And now on the simulation side of these kind of components, we are seeing a problem with a highly nonlinear nature since this uh, shape is deformed. Uh, we have a contact condition and we are also deforming plastic and leading material. So by 
by doing that in simulation, we can also obtain the required force for the expansion. And this force changes with the friction co uh, coefficients and expansion ratios. So different kind of uh, studies can be performed in this uh, scenario. For example, changes in geometries of both components, uh, the formations at different uh, expansion rates, and also the stresses in the at the interface between the the die and the and the pipe. <clears throat> now, uh, sometimes certain evaluations have to be done to demonstrate the structural integrity of certain components containing flaws or damages. And a decision must be taken at this moment to run assist, to repair, to re-rate, or to replace. So that is why the standard API 579 is followed. And because this one addresses the assessment techniques to ensure safe and reliable operations of pressurized equipment. Mainly, uh, well, definitely used in the oil and gas facilities. And this kind of um, assessments are also called maintenance engineering, and they can be done mainly in three scenarios. The first one is when defects associated with in service operations are detected, for example, when corrosion, when impacts, when chemical reactions are seen in the structures. Uh, secondly, when operation changes are planned, for example, changes in temperature or changes in pressure. And finally, when a defect has been detected after any manufacturing process, for example, when, you, when the operators found uh, improper reinforcement or well defects, as shown in this slide, uh, where they found uh, some well defects in the pipe welding. And for doing this, there are, um, well, this maintenance engineering or fitness for service also is done by different people, depending on the complexity of the defect or the issue. Uh, for example, for a level one, according to this standard, it can be managed by the inspector or he may ask for some support from a plant engineer. For a level two, plant engineers or even engineering specialists can as, um, are needed for the assessment. And also some accurate measurements of the flow or damage are required. And for level three, this is where simulation or CAE, CAE is likely to be required for a detailed evaluation. And nowadays, different customers already use Abacus for this stress, for stress analysis at this level. Now, with this standard, certain uh, different flaws can be studied with simulation. One of them is cracking. Um, and for cracking, there are already certain techniques for analyzing these uh, crack propagation simulations, such as XFEM or the cohesive abacus capabilities. But for these standards, uh, validation process is proposed based on the failure assessment diagram. So in this diagram, we can see that there are two limits uh, related to the brittle fracture and the plastic collapse. And these two ratios are necessary for this method, for the calculation of this method. And also, uh, an elastic plastic analysis can be used to evaluate the plastic collapse limit and define the curve position, because as we can see, the curve is defining the safe and the unsafe zones. And finally, we can um, define an elastic analysis to obtain the stress intensity and evaluate the brittle fracture limit of this cracking. And other, other scenario that we can um, assess with this standard is the weld, uh, weld misalignment, because welding process can lead to some issues. It can be failures or, or misalignments. And this can happen both at construction stage, but also during operation stages after some maintenance efforts. So when one of these issues is seen, an operator should decide whether to operate the plant as is, uh, to repair as soon as possible, or to wait until the next plant shutdown. But let's keep in mind that these shutdowns are very costly at this point. 
So an evaluation of the residual stresses and potential material damages can be performed. And for that uh, purpose, we can perform different type of analysis, for example, the thermal stress analysis. And also we can uh, model well multiple welding paths. Abacus has a welding interface plugin for that. For, for, for this kind of uh, welding uh, situations. And uh, now we will wrap up with this uh, with a special tool set that so if we want to manage risk and uh, control inspections costs throughout the facilities life cycle, we can make use of this kind of, of these kind of tools that are offered by the equity engineering group. So these tools perform complex calculations in accordance in accordance to different uh, industry codes and standards. And we can see a variety of tools for that. For example, we, we have the design and piping tools. And these, these uh, shell pressure thickness and pipe pressure thickness are used to determine the required thickness or maximum allowable working pressure for these components. We also have the inspection tools. For example, we have this tool for the ASM E B16.5 pipe flanges. And this tool is used to determine the pressure temperature rating for a standard flange. Uh, the, well, this flange manufactured in accordance to this standard. We also count with some in-service tools. One of them is the hydrogen bakeout. Uh, this one is used to determine the time required for a hydrogen bakeout operation. And we finally have some fatigue tools. These, uh, these are used to calculate the durability of the components or certain areas. For example, this tool is a welded joint fatigue life. And this tool is used to predict the probability of fatigue failure for different welded uh, joint specimens. So this uh, equity, so, so the equity engineering group presents this tool set in a cloud-based cloud -based platform. So we have all of the benefits of a cloud. Uh, which are that it is easily accessible and it is ready to use without any installation required. And this tool set has helped many customers at their specific scenarios in accordance to the standards they are currently following. So with this one is, uh, I want to thank you for your attention of the, on, on this webinar. And uh, these were the, the the simulations that we want to show you. And if you have any question of these uh, topics, I will, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, so thank you very much. And we really liked it. I really liked it. So we're going to wait for um, our attendees to send a couple of questions. You can do it in the chat box and those can be answered right now. Um, we're starting to receive a couple. So um, I'm going to go ahead. So sure. Victor, about the pipe soil elements, can they be used for pipes over the soil? Uh, okay, so well, th th these kind of elements, the pipestone interaction elements, are uh, a special type of elements for, I mean, when when modeling them inside the inside Abacus, inside the tool, uh, you first have to define the pipe and then the pipe soil interaction. So if there is no need for the for this soil or the constitutive model of the soil, uh, uh, about the the the, the pipe, uh, I don't think it should be necessary. You should only model the the pipe and constrain it with the necessary boundary conditions for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have another question. 
Um, do you have other fatigue tools on the cloud tool set? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. As I was saying, this there's this. Um, they, they are categorized in different uh, tool sets. We have the fatigue tools, and not only. Well, I, I presented to you this the water joint fatigue life tool, but also we comes with uh, fatigue damage. Yeah, if you fatigue damage, fatigue data analysis. And uh, I think we also have, yeah, smooth bar, smooth bar uh, fatigue lights for obviously smooth bars. And yeah, there are different tools. I also, I'm also aware of a material database inside here that you can uh, access to it and you can get the, uh, what's the word, the, the, the properties, not only the elastic properties of, or the necessary properties of certain calculations, but also the fatigue properties of, of certain metals used in these kind of uh, scenarios. Thank you, Victor. Awesome. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions, but if you come across any doubt, uh, you can just reach out to Victor. Um, uh, he presents. And yeah. That's that's the contact information. You can reach out to me um, in marketing if you if you would like to schedule some um, one on one uh, talk with Victor to talk about some specific problems that you may may have. You're so welcome to do that. And thank you, Victor, for your presentation. Thank you, everyone, for joining and for your attention. And I hope you have an okay. Okay, now thank the thanks to you, Kenya, and thank you all for attending this webinar. And yeah, as Kenya was saying, we will be happy to to receive any other any questions you may have. And yeah, have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.